how's everybody doing today? As you can see, the words do not match up to what I'm saying because this is a voiceover. I went into that little alcove thinking that it would provide me with a little reprieve from the wind. And I listened back to the sound immediately and it was unlistenable. So I had walked back to my car after I shot this and tweaked the mic and uh, fixed it for the rest of the video. Although I don't speak too much during the video. Uh, the wind just really messed up a lot of it and incredibly windy, incredibly cold day. But I'm going to take you through the United 93 Memorial. I think we all know the story of Tuesday, September 11th, 2001. We heard that a plane had crashed in the World Trade Center that many of us probably witnessed on TV. The second plane flying into the World Trade Center. Then another plane hitting the Pentagon. And finally, the rumor of the fourth plane headed towards the U.S. Capitol. And this is the story of United 93. Passengers and crew members had fought back against the hijackers and caused the plane to crash, thwarting the attempt on the Capitol. Apparently, that's where it was headed, to the Capitol building. The passengers and crew are hailed as heroes. And this flight is also known as the flight that fought back. And the reason that is is because a lot of the passengers were in contact with their loved ones on the ground and knew that planes had been hijacked across America. And they decided to take matters into their own hands. So I will tell you, the visitor center actually is open. This is it right here. And uh, you can go in. I was just in there. You can't take uh, video or pictures inside because due to the sense of nature, uh, family items and uh, copyright they said because there's uh, footage on the TVs that are playing and um, I'll tell you I went through it and it is I highly recommend coming here it's tough it's difficult to see some of the items in there uh, the personal items and then to hear you can hear voicemails left by uh, some of the passengers you learn a lot more about the uh, what happened that day, and uh, it's tough, especially when you get to the part where it has pictures and individual stories of each passenger. I knew that was here. I didn't expect it to be as um, well. I did. I. It's tough. I'm not just uh, not playing that up for it. It, it. it was. It's a difficult thing to see. All. Uh, 40 people that were on that plane, I'm not including the hijackers, of course, their stories, and uh, it's just, uh, yeah, seeing the pictures of them with their families and hearing some of those voicemails that they left, it's very, very, very heavy. Highly recommend you come here and experience it for yourself if you can. If you can't, I, I wish I could have shown you inside, but... Uh, yeah, the amount of debris found here, it's, it's tiny, like tiny pieces of the plane. There's one of the nose of the plane that was somewhat big, but fragments, fragments. And I mean, there was a four month, I believe, cleanup of the area or, well, let's take a look here and we're going to go to, I'm going to show you this part here. So this black granite pathway, this marks the exact flight path right here and it goes all the way out to this overlook
of the passengers and crew of United 93 are equal, of course. And I just saw inside the visitor center a few pictures and stories that hit me. And then this older couple who looked like parents or grandparents, and I just imagine their last moments together holding hands or hugging. And then Jeremy Glick here, who looked like someone I would have gone to high school with. And of course, Todd Beamer, who was on the phone with the GTE operator and his famous words just before the phone line cut off was are you ready okay let's roll and it's believed that that's when the passengers tried to storm the cockpit to take back the plane As you walk along the Memorial Plaza, it provides you a, an opportunity to view the impact site and the grove of eastern hemlock trees that were damaged as a result of the Flight 93 crash. There's a visible gap in the tree line that serves as a lasting scar from where over 80 damaged trees were removed. Near the base of the hemlock grove sits a native 17.5 ton sandstone boulder placed in 2011 to indicate the edge of the impact site. During the 2001 crime scene investigation, the FBI methodically excavated the impact site over 13 days. The crater was later backfilled in October 2001 at the direction of the local coroner. Today, the impact site and the grove are closed to the public. Families of the passengers and crew of Flight 93, however, have access to visit the final resting place. The black granite walkway in front of the Wall of Names is a continuation of the flight path. 
It ends at the ceremonial gate, which is constructed of hemlock, and beyond which only National Park Service officials or family members of passengers and crew of Flight 93 are permitted. Ah, thank goodness and um, right here this is the Tower of Voices and there's 40 wind chimes representing the 40 lost souls and we're going to walk over to it and reflect and listen um, I can hear it already and it's I just met up with a park ranger down the road uh, we were talking and it took a while for this to be constructed and we were just discussing how desolate and quiet it is and it's because it's uh, winter in a valley in Pennsylvania the wind chill down here with the, surrounded by the mountains is incredibly cold now I'm Canadian I can put I can handle it but um, my hands are freezing up so it's hard to even hold the camera uh, so that's why it's been minimal uh, trying to do gonna have to do a lot of voice shorts and that's okay and um, he just said that's why it's so quiet here and why there's not many people but in the summer it's very very busy and I can't stress enough how how you should come here how much you should come here and how important it is that you do if you ever get the chance and if you don't get the chance I hope this video is doing justice to what you would like to see about 9-11 uh, memorial I've been asked to do a lot of videos about 9-11 um, countless times I get asked and I've done one before in New York and I plan on doing one about the Pentagon and I've been to that a few times but that was before um, YouTube but yeah so let's take a look at the Tower of Voices it's quiet now but we'll hear something Five chimes hang from each of the eight tower columns. Wow.
that's my visit to the 993 Memorial. I'm not sure how I'm going to put this video together with the, the extreme wind conditions and um, everything, but I'm glad I came out here and I'm glad uh, I was able to um, bring you along as always. And this is my last video for a while, so. And by that I mean, and not, this video is about 9 11, 9 93. By that I mean, this is the last video I'm filming on this filming trip. And I'm back to Canada to just um, upload and edit over 150 videos I've been working on for a long time. And just stay in one place for a while. So, this is the last stop on my uh, 2021 trips. And I'll be home in Canada within 24 hours. To, uh, I'm just staying the night here, outside here, and then driving home tomorrow. And I think it's fitting I ended here. Peace. Peace and love to all the victims. Much love and respect of not just United 93, all the victims on 9 11 and their families. So much destructive damage to so many families. And. This is heavy, and I highly recommend you come out here if you can. Like I've said a million times already. And if you can't, I'm glad that I get to do this for you. And you get to come along with me. Peace. Out.